So we're going to go to our first guest who is going to join us here on the old Skip Skype. Yes, the old Skype, Rooney. I look like I have no neck in this shirt. That is fantastic. We are going to go to our first guest. She is going to join us here on our big broadcast. The fantastic Lisa Mann will join us here in just a few seconds. And, uh, I, have I believe we've got Lisa Mann with us. Lisa, how are you, my friend? Hey. I'm doing pretty good. How are you? Can you hear me okay? Yes, I've got you. You've got a fabulous background there. You look like quite the perv magnet today. We, we've got all sorts of cool, cool <laughs> stuff going today. Uh, <laughs> today, man. <laughs> you know, you 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 look like you should do a side project that that that's heavy metal oriented. But um, so. that. that <laughs> So, uh, Lisa Mann is with us today here on our big broadcast. She is fantastic. The last time we had her on this program, we were talking about her uh, her side project, her, her metal uh, music. And uh, I wanted to have her back on today to talk about her blues side of things. And uh, Lisa, so what, what, what got you involved in blues? What was, what was the big thing that, that you decided you just had to do blues music? Yeah. Well, you know, I I, uh, I started playing bass guitar really early and singing really early. I was 11 years old and walked home from school and saved my lunch money to get my first bass. And I was I became a big metalhead. But I also I loved early rock. Like uh, the first stuff I played was like Deep Purple and Cream and Black Sabbath and stuff like that. And so I became a working musician at the age of 19. They made me sit sit in the uh, kitchen and hang out with the cook on the breaks, you know, because <laughs> I was too young to stay in the club. I got to know a lot of cooks, you know. A, a That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so I became a working musician, and eventually, see, I worked in Seattle in the 90s for a while, and then I came back down to Portland, and there's a huge blue scene in Portland. And if you want to work and you want to get paid in Portland, it's like you better learn to play some blues. So I started, you know, playing with – you know, Paul DeLay, uh, Duffy Bishop, uh, Sonny Hess, all kinds of blues musicians. And it was like, oh, so those bass lines that Led Zeppelin were playing and that Cream were playing, that, oh, okay, now I know where that came from, you know? So it was like, I just felt right at home and uh, started playing with some great musicians. And I just fell in love with blues. I just fell in love with i came kind of through the back door through that british stuff you know <laughs> <laughs> it is lisa man she's with us today here on our big broadcast coast to coast and border to border on iheart radio today and also 990 wbob the mix on tuesdays and lisa man is with us today here on our broadcast and uh she is of course from uh portland oregon uh, you tell me a little bit about, you know, what, one of the things I know about Portland, uh, well, two things I know about Portland. Well, mm -hmm. I guess three today. One is you're <laughs> from there. Um, two is I've heard that Portland is the Mecca for strip clubs. They have more strip clubs in the entire world. They have them in Portland, Oregon. And, That's uh, fact. so before I get to my, my, my third thing, which is basically just a, a Tom Likas thing, um, tell me about the fact that there are thousands of strip clubs in Portland, Oregon. What is the deal with that? You know, I think it's, it's, it's the laws, of course, <laughs> the regulations, and also the fact that um, up in Washington and in some other states, the clubs have stage fees. And so the girls are actually, like, paying to strip. It's really wow. awful. It's a really disgusting system that exploits women. And, uh, you know, some of these women, they'll work all day and all the money they earn, they give to the club and they go home with nothing. Or some of them will go home in the hole. And this is another state. Wow. In Portland, they get they keep what they get and they don't pay stage fees. And a lot of them are very, you know, sex positive and, and yeah. run by women and some of them even like they have girls that will do tricks and fi with fire. <laughs> yes. And they have tattoos and it's 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 wild. It's a lot of fun and I think it's I think it's a 
it's actually a pretty female positive thing here in Portland. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, I, we were going to be coming out to Exotica a few years ago when it was going to be yeah. in, in Portland. And uh, I had interviewed several people from the area and they said that uh, that is the home to strip clubs. They have yeah. thousands and thousands of strip clubs. <laughs> you got the ones where the girls breathe the fire and stuff like that. <laughs> That's where you got to go. That is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Jugglers and shit. That's right. Now, uh, I've also heard uh, radio personality Tom Likas also refers to Portland, Oregon as Portland, Oregon. Uh, he said that a lot of the women are not attractive there. The thing that I'm trying to figure out is, one, you're from there. You're pretty attractive. Two, if they've got all these strip clubs, why are these strip clubs filled with unattractive women, Lisa? I don't care what Tom Likas <laughs> thinks. I really don't give a rat's ass. That's about awesome. What that guy thinks. You know, <laughs> okay, I'll tell you this much. Yes, yes, go. We have it. My, my husband's <laughs> nephew is 22 years old, and he's been coming out here from New Jersey and visiting. Oh, with Jesus, every New summer. Jersey. <laughs> and we go downtown and we, we go check out you know the the just the shops and things and go out to eat and we do all that stuff yes and and the and you see these girls riding by on these bicycles and they got they got little stripy socks and colored hair there's a certain look to chicks in portland and it's a, it's an acquired taste they got <laughs> that's an acquired taste and stripy socks all the way up their thighs and tiny little shorts you know and it's all very retro you know and he was he was a happy young man <laughs> there's like there's just cute chicks riding bikes all over Portland, so I don't know what the hell he's talking That's about. That's awesome. That's awesome. It is uh, Lisa Mann. She's with us today here in our broadcast. So with, with your blues music, uh, when, when you first started doing the blues, what was some of the feedback folks gave you? Well, you know, I, I worked with uh, Paul DeLay before he passed away. They called him the big man, and he was considered the greatest living blues harmonica player at the time he's sadly no longer with us but you know i played with him and i was still learning and there was a couple of times when he would cut the song short and just go like nah nope this isn't right it's not right and so he was a taskmaster man so he made me learn it's like there's some people who are a little more gentle, but I'm glad I, I played with him. And I also played with a guy named uh, David Vest, who's a piano player. And he just sat down and showed me some stuff because there really is a feel to it. You can't, this blues is not some, oh, it's easy, you know, one, four, five, it's easy. It's not. You have to get the, the feel of it. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And so I just, you know, whatever, whatever they suggested, man, I listened. So I, I, yeah, that was it. It just getting the musical feedback. The main thing you got to do, whatever style of music you want to play, if you're a budding musician, just listen to a lot of it. Don't play along with it. That's just awesome. To a lot of it, you know, that's awesome. Lisa Mann with us today. She joins us live here on a broadcast. She is fantastic. And, uh, I, I, I just love the fact that <laughs> you have someone who comes and visits you from New Jersey. Have you ever oh, yeah. been to New Jersey? Have you? I got family. We got family in New York, New Jersey, Florida. I married a guy from New York, so, you know. <laughs> so every now and then I start talking like this. So, you know. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so, so Lisa, what, what, what are you up to now as far as your blues stuff, now that uh, venues are starting to open back up and people are starting to get bookings again and things like this? Well, there's not a whole lot. I am going to be playing the Flagstaff Blues Fest uh, next summer. And we have, this is the third time we've tried to book this damn festival. And I, I have felt so bad for all the promoters out there because, I mean, they really struggled the past. I mean, it's been, you know, two years in a row where they haven't been able to to you know get the insurance or or whatever it is it's just hard it's just been hard to plan 
So, you know, I still don't have a whole lot going on this year, but we got Flagstaff next year. I'm hoping to go back to uh, Boston, the Boston area next year. And I'm really hoping to go back to the UK because I've done some tours in the UK. So I'm really hoping to do that. But everything is still pretty much up in the air. Uh, like I said, it's still hard to plan. So. It is Lisa Mann. She's with us today here on our broadcast. She is a fantastic blues musician. She has won so many awards, I can't even count them all. Uh, tell me a little bit about when, when you won your first blues award. What was that like for you? Oh, yeah, the Blues Music Award. That's from the Blues Foundation. It's kind of like winning a blues Grammy, you know? <laughs> and that was my first nomination. And here I am, this, like, former metal chick with you know, a six string bass, which freaks people out. And I, I was nominated alongside some, some really heavy hitters in, in the scene. And you know what? Uh, when I was in the lobby and saying hello, all these women kept coming up to me and saying, Oh, you're Lisa, man. You're so, I voted for you, you know? So it was all, I think there's all these, because there's a lot of women in the blues scene and they, they go, they go to the shows, they promote the shows and they were coming up to me. I don't know who these people are. And so <laughs> I, they called my name when, and I went up there and I won the award. I was just stunned. I was, I, I probably made the stupidest speech in history because <laughs> I, I don't even know what I said, but. I, w I was pretty flabbergasted and really honored because there's so many, uh, like I said, there were so many bass players I was up, up against that, uh, that I really respect so much. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, it, it was awesome. Lisa Mann with us today. She joins us live here in our broadcast. So what is the latest album uh, that you've got out there and why should people go pick it up? Well, the latest album is called Old Girl. And uh, it's kind of like, uh, you know, two words that mean dif different things. Like jumbo shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. But it's like, it's about the song. It's a five song EP. And the title track is about just like refusing to grow up, basically. Yeah. And even though I am a woman of a certain age, I still feel like I'm a girl. I'm a kid. And I, I still want to you know, put too much black eyeliner on and uh, wear inappropriate clothes and <laughs> make records, you know, that's what I want to do. So that's it's called awesome. Old Girl. You can find it on Bandcamp. You can find all my music on Bandcamp. So, you know, check it out. I'm, I'm easy to find. Just Google Lisa Mann and you'll find me. That's awesome. Well, we are going to do this. We are going to put you on hold here on Skype. We are going to play some of your music. Cool. And uh, then when we get back, we will uh, we will do some more chatting, Lisa. I'll be right back with you. And uh, we are going to go to some Lisa Mann. She is going to join us back here on the old Skip Skype here in just a few moments. However, we are going to go to some of her music. You can get more information on lisamannmusic.com.
That is Lisa Mann, old girl, and it's here on your Sunday radio broadcast, lisamannmusic.com. If you want to get more information on what Lisa is up to, it's lisamannmusic.com. And Lisa Mann back with us here on our big program. I'll tell you, you are fantastic, my friend. I just... Very <laughs> kind. Thank you. You have got Thank some great much. music, my friend. Thank you. Um. Uh, yeah, that's a very country sounding song. I'm kind of country adjacent as a blues. Uh, <laughs> I'm from West Virginia originally, so that's that's just going to be there. So that's awesome. So yeah. uh, besides this uh, blues festival that you've been trying to book for the last, it's been crazy years or so. Uh, w- what else do you have lined up as far as live performances and things like this? Oh, I have. I just have mostly some local things. I've kind of put off the booking. I have uh, some shows in Spokane actually coming up uh, at a place called Bridge Press Cellars. I have some shows at uh, you know regional clubs. Uh, there's a casino that we're going to be performing at. Uh, but yeah, I've kind of put off booking for a little while just because uh, you know. It's it's like I said it's it's been hard to plan and I am sick and tired of getting those cancellation notices. <laughs> so I'm just I'm just kind of waiting and putting putting it off. You know I think the pa- pandemic has a lot of us reassessing what we were doing because before the pandemic I even remember laying in my bed and thinking I want off of this roller coaster. I was traveling so much and doing so much. Uh, I just you know, was worn out. And so, you know, I don't want to work that hard anymore, really. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to work that hard anymore. <laughs> well, uh, I I am going to be sending you a link to mm-hmm. and, and, and some information to a venue that uh, I, I think you should try to see if you can get your uh, get get yourself into uh, oh, yeah. here locally. So uh, I would. Uh, I would just look at this email I'm going to send you here in a few, okay. and 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 see what uh, see what you can get figured out there. I but uh, Lisa Mann with us today. She's an award-winning blues artist. She joins us today here on the Sunday Show, and uh, she is fantastic. So, what what are what are some of the other things besides some local gigs and some festivals? Are are, are you planning any new music? Do you have anything coming up? In, in, in anything as we head into the holiday season? Well, I do plan to go. Actually, I do have a gig in Riverside, Iowa at the Riverside Casino. Now, see, I I can't remember anything about anything. So this is actually the night before Thanksgiving. Uh, there's a gig in Riverside, Iowa at the Riverside Casino. It's like uh, Women of Blues Rock. And there's all kinds of uh, female artists, A.V. Grouse Band, uh, Thierry uh, uh, Odabi will be there. Lara Price is going to be there. Uh, it, it's going to be a huge show. It's going to be a, a blast. Also, I'm uh, going to go to the International Blues Challenge this year. That's awesome. And, uh, That's awesome. Yeah, I'm going to go. Uh, the, uh, Thierry Odabi actually has a uh, a women's showcase that's going to happen down there, and they're they're always looking for judges. So I'll probably. Uh, you know, help them out and, and do some judging for some of the competition and just hang out and schmooze. I'm also, I'm rehearsing today on the metal front. I'm rehearsing today with a band called Splintered Throne. I joined. That's that awesome. 
Is that cool or what? <laughs> I joined that band as their singer a while back. I was actually a fan. And so when they had auditions, I was like, yeah, I'm going to check this out. So I joined as their singer. They already have a bass player, so they don't need me to do that. And we have had every kind of delay possible, mostly thanks to the pandemic. Uh, but we're getting in the studio. We've uh, tracked the drums. We're getting in the studio, so we're, we're having a rehearsal today after this interview with uh, Splintered Throne working on a new album. That's awesome. Got That's fingers awesome. in a few different pies. You know? <laughs> well, Lisa, you you once again, you are fantastic. I love chatting with you, and uh, I will let you get to your get to your practice. And uh, thanks for doing this today, my friend. Thank you. I love your show, man. You I appreciate it. Day. Thank you, Lisa. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Take appreciate it, my friend. There she goes. That's Lisa, man. She yeah. joins today here on our big broadcast. Mm -hmm. Coast to coast, border to border on iHeartRadio today and also AMFM247.com. And we are going to take a little bit of a break. And when we come back, we are going to have more coming up on the other side. It is the world famous Jiggy Chegwar Radio broadcast. Uh, by the way, uh, we have got an incredible sponsor that we want to talk about today. These folks are pretty amazing. Uh, they have a interesting approach to things. And I wanted to, uh, to get their information in here before we, uh, before we took a break. Because they're, they're interesting. They have an interesting concept. Uh, it's called GiveBible.com. Your donation of $5 can show someone the way to heaven. That's right. GiveBible.com is an opportunity to give a holy Bible into the hands of someone who cannot afford it. By doing this, you have sowed God's words in someone and the great blessing you would inherit. And check it out today. It's GiveBible.com. That's right. They're also on old Facebook. They're also on the Facebook. Go over to GiveBible.com for more information. And we are going to take a brief time out here. <laughs> 